Wow, so the Eagles seem to have found a hidden gem during training camp as their sixth round rookie wide receiver Johnny Wilson continues to get starting reps and he's been super impressive and made some really nice plays. And it seems like he could actually have a very real chance of stealing the starting wide receiver three job. Meanwhile, Eagles defensive coordinator Vic Fangio just made some shocking comments regarding this forgotten breakout star and it seems like Fangio has the keys to unlocking him this season. Plus, Howie Roseman just went out and signed a new linebacker while Vic Fangio gave us a promising update on Bryce Huff and several other guys impressed at practice. So let's talk about that and all the other news from camp. And we won't waste any time, let's get straight into it. So let's start off with the Eagles defense, because the offense has been getting the majority of the focus throughout camp so far, but the defense has also been really intriguing, as defensive coordinator Vic Fangio has come in here and completely revamped things, as not only are the guys in better shape and communicating better than they were at this point last year, but they're also seemingly farther ahead in learning the scheme, and also just their comfortability in it. And the scheme itself is also far more complex, and guys have to be versatile to be successful in it. And wide receiver Devontae Smith has taken notice of that as he revealed some of the big differences that he's noticed from going up against Vic Fangio's defense during practice. A lot of different looks, a lot of different looks, um, a lot of different guys. Um, seem like every play you got somebody different in front of you. Um, so it's a good problem to have, to have all those guys rotating, have a lot of guys playing different positions. Um, you know, I always tell the guys in the room, you know, the more you can do, the more interchangeable you are, the better. So I do love that because part of the problem with the defense last year was just the fact that everything was so boring and easy to game plan for and to pick apart, but this year that should not be a problem as the constant rotating part should make for a much more unpredictable, active, and just overall more difficult to attack defense, that is if everybody is prepared to take on the challenge and moving around to different spots and also communicating of course. And now getting back to Smitty, he's also apparently having a great camp as just a few days ago AJ Brown had said nobody has been able to cover Devontae and he looks poised to take another leap. And wide receiver coach Aaron Moorhead also just said that this is the best camp he's seen Smitty have in their now four years together. So it's awesome that Devontae has been impressing during camp, and based on those comments from Moorhead, it really does seem like he's on the verge of possibly having his best season yet. And also, Smitty did crash Moorhead's presser yesterday to ask him this question. Why are you such a great receiver coach? I got great receivers, it makes me a great coach. What you yeah, I don't think you can really argue with that. And I'm also sure it helps the receivers and receiver coach to have a quarterback that is playing absolutely lights out. And that's exactly what they have in Jalen Hurts so far at camp. As leading into Monday's practice, Hurts has been completing an extremely high percentage of his passes while making smart decisions and being on pace to throw a lot more touchdowns than he did last year during camp. And perhaps the most impressive thing is that ahead of Monday's session, he still had yet to throw an interception, throwing 132 straight passes without giving it up to the defense. And again, it's just so exciting that Jalen is having as good a camp as he is. And someone else who apparently has also had a great camp, according to one report, is head coach Nick Sirianni, with Eagles reporter Elliot Shore Park saying, quote, Nick Sirianni is having a great training camp. He's going to prove a lot of people wrong this year. So on one hand, I love that because obviously I'm rooting for Nick Sirianni to have a bounce back season and just reestablish himself as one of the league's upper tier coaches, but on the other hand, I gotta ask what that even looks like. Like, how do we know Nick is having a great camp? I mean, we know he's taken a large step back from the offense, and although we know he definitely still had a decent sized hand in creating it, we just can't solely base Sirianni's performance during camp on how the offense is doing. Now, the things you might be able to look at is how he's holding guys accountable, what kind of messages is he delivering to the team, is he getting the guys to all buy into what they're building, does he have the guys working hard during practice, how is he managing things during scrimmage periods, and how is just the overall team culture and chemistry looking? I mean, I think all those are things that you can look at that could be factors in gauging how good Sirianni has been during camp and if that's what ESP is talking about then I love it but I still feel like it's probably tough to gauge how good a camp Nick has had and if you do look at some of ESP's past tweets and takes you know that he does have a bias for Sirianni so I wonder if he's just trying to double down on his previous takes but that being said who knows and what do you guys think? Do you put any stock into this report? And also, what are your thoughts on Nick Sirianni just a month away from the start of the regular season? But now moving on, the Eagles were obviously back at practice on Monday, but before the guys got out there on the field, the Birds actually made an interesting roster move as they signed former Jaguars linebacker Shaquille Quarterman to a one-year deal and waived offensive lineman Jason Poe. Now, Quarterman is surely just a depth signing and somebody that will be fighting to make the roster or practice squad most likely during camp, as he's pretty much just been a special teams player during his time with the Jags as he's only registered 55 total tackles in four seasons, and he's never started a game in those four years either, so at best, he's just a good depth addition and special teams guy, but overall, I like it for what it is, and I think it's a smart minor addition. But staying with the topic of linebackers, up at the podium before practice began was defensive coordinator Vic Fangio, where he was asked a question about N'Kobe Dean and how he's looked during camp, and he gave us a pretty interesting answer. Good, I thought N'Kobe had a, um, the first few days of practice, um, 
he, I thought he played really, really good. And, you know, took a step back a little bit in the stadium practice. But overall, he's been doing really good. So for the most part, I think Fangio gave us a promising update on how Nakobe has looked. I mean, he did say he took a bit of a step back in the open practice, which I actually covered on Friday, but other than that, he's apparently looked good. And Fangio did also say that no decisions have been made in regards to the linebacker or cornerback positional battle. So based on those two things, it kind of seems like Dean is still very much in the battle to start at linebacker, even if he is still more than likely behind Bond at this point. And he even made a play today as he pushed Will Shipley back into Kenny Pickett for the sack. And Brandon Lee Gowton said that he's done some really good things as both a blitzer and in stopping the run, but he also did mention that his coverage is his one big issue. So I guess we'll see how Cam continues to play out for Nakobe and whether or not he actually has a chance of earning the starting job. But getting back to Fangio and his presser, he also had some very interesting comments on defensive tackle Milton Williams, as the third round pick in the 2021 draft often gets overshadowed by the Eagles' two first round pick defensive tackles in Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis, but Milt is a very talented player with high potential and somebody who has already flashed a ton of ability in the league before. And ahead of a season where he's going to have the biggest role he's ever had in his NFL career, he's been flashing at training camp, including getting a few sacks and pressures, and also batting down some passes at the line of scrimmage, and he actually had one of those yesterday and Eagles defensive coordinator Vic Fangio has taken note of Milt's productive play during camp so far and he also revealed that he's actually had an eye on Milt for a long time. Yeah, I like Milt. Milt's a good player. He's solid uh, both versus the run and in pass rush. He's a guy that I've from afar have liked um, that the Eagles have had. In fact, I tried to get us to trade for him last year in Miami uh, but how he wouldn't do it. Um, but I like Milt. Milt Milt's a pro. Yeah, I'm fully convinced that this is going to be Milton Williams' true breakout season, because if Vic wanted to trade for him last year, then I know he sees a ton of potential in him, and Fangio is also a defensive coordinator who tends to get a lot out of his defensive tackles. I mean, just see Christian Wilkins last year. So that combined with the fact that Milt is going to have the biggest role he's ever had in his four years with the Eagles this season makes me believe that Fangio is going to unlock him, and he's going to have a great year. And another defensive tackle we're hoping we can say the same for is Jordan Davis, and with the way that he's looked so far during camp, it seems like he could be on track to do that, and he actually had another really impressive day on Monday. So don't worry, we're going to get to that and so much more in just a minute, but real quick, I do want to say, if you are enjoying this video and don't want to miss any other Eagles training camp coverage or just Eagles coverage in general coming in the future, make sure you subscribe and also really, really importantly, turn on notifications so you're notified instantly when one of these videos is uploaded. I think that's a win-win for the both of us because not only do I get more people watching these videos, but you don't miss any other Eagles coverage and content just like this. So again, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications and also make sure you drop a like let's see if we can hit 800 likes on today's video and now with all that being said let's get back into the video now as i was saying jordan davis continued his impressive play at training camp on monday as he made a few really nice plays one being where in a situation where the offense was backed up on the one yard line davis quickly burst into the backfield and hit saquon barkley for the safety and he also apparently nearly had a sack on a scrambling Jalen hurts and was just consistently collapsing the pocket during practice so just add all that onto the list of impressive plays that davis has made during camp as it really does seem like he's getting ready to have a great season and someone else who i'm hoping is going to have a great year is new edge rusher bryce huff although i would be lying to you if i said i wasn't at least slightly on edge about huff just based on fangio's previous comments from earlier in training camp saying that huff wasn't quite ready to be an every down player at that moment and also reports saying that huff has had an up and down camp so far as he's had great moments where he's gotten some good pressures and even some sacks but he's also had moments where he struggled but vic fangio did give us a positive update on huff today as he had this to say about him. How's the progression going with uh, Bryce Huff being an every down player? It's getting better. He's working very hard at it. Uh, he's very prideful in it and he's improving. So that's definitely a positive sign. And really, I just don't think we should read too much into this whole situation with Huff right now because it's obviously a big adjustment going from being a rotational guy with one team to the top edge defender on another team in just one offseason. So let's just give him some time to adjust and try not to overreact too much. And I'm sure Huff will be acclimated quick and be just fine during the regular season. But now getting to some injury updates from practice, both offensive linemen Tyler Steen and Mekhi Becton were back at practice today. And with them, of course, seemingly being in competition for the starting right guard job, it was really going to be interesting to see which of them 
took first team reps. And that was Makai Becton as it was reported that he was with the starting offense to begin practice. However, a little bit later, we did find out that Tyler Steen just wasn't participating in team drills at all, so it's not like Becton was getting these reps over Steen, and I guess we'll just have to wait for Steen to actually get cleared for team activities to find out the current state of the right guard battle. Now, as far as the state of the nickel cornerback position goes, Quinnia Mitchell continued to get first team reps there, so it's seeming more and more like the Eagles like what they're seeing from him at that spot, and there could be a solid chance that Mitchell could actually start there once the season rolls around. However, Vic Fangio did make it clear that Mitchell playing in the slot is a bonus, and they still do like him more as an outside guy. No, we that one part of the equation in that, because I do think when you, um, you know, drafted a corner per se in the first round, he needs to be a corner. And then if he can play inside, that's a bonus. And this is a bonus right now that he's been able to play inside. We still really like him as a corner though too. So that definitely makes a lot of sense. And playing him in the slot is probably just a way of trying to get him out on the field more. And it's probably just a matter of time, honestly, before Mitchell's starting for this team on the outside, whether it's this year or in years to come. But for right now, it seems like the Eagles are liking what they're seeing from Isaiah Rogers on the outside as he started at cornerback for his fourth practice in a row and fifth overall. So it definitely seems like he's really making a strong case to start opposite of Darius Slay. And then just staying with the secondary here, we actually did have an unfortunate injury happen on Tuesday with star safety CJ Garner. Gardner Johnson heading inside at one point during practice, and Nick Sirianni followed him in there to just check up on him. Now, Nick did come out and say that Chauncey was okay, so that's obviously fantastic news and glad to hear that the injury is not serious, but this is definitely going to be something to now monitor as camp moves on, and hopefully CJ just doesn't end up missing too much time. But now, moving on, one underdog in the secondary actually made a really nice play on Monday, as undrafted rookie cornerback Sean Stevens had a pick six on a Tanner McKee pass where the throw to Will Shipley was good, but it ended up bouncing off Shipley and popped up into the air where Stevens was able to grab it and return it for a touchdown. Now, Stevens is a guy who's fighting for a roster or practice squad spot after making the team due to a nice tryout in rookie minicamp, so this play definitely does help his case a little bit. And someone else who really helped their case on Monday was wide receiver Johnny Wilson. As with Paris Campbell still out with a groin injury, Wilson continued to get a ton of reps as the wide receiver three, and he's continuing to make the most of them, as he made several plays during practice today, including catching a really nice deep pass from Jalen Hurts early in practice, and then later Later, he actually caught a touchdown pass from Hertz where the coverage was good from Keely Ringo, but he was able to make the contested catch. So Wilson is definitely continuing to make a push to start as the third wide receiver for this team, and seemingly every time he gets an opportunity, he's making a play, and Devontae Smith has taken note of Wilson's impressive play during camp as he praised him on Sunday. Um he's he's a big guy, um, has a huge catch radius, and um He's young, but he, he's learning fast. Uh, and I think at being an older guy now, just trying to, you know, bring him along, all those guys, bringing them along and, you know, trying to show them the right way to do things. So I'm glad to hear that Smitty likes what he's seen from Wilson so far and also that he's willing to help mentor him. And overall, it really does seem like the Eagles could have gotten an absolute steal in Johnny Wilson. And I feel like his chances of starting go up pretty much every day at practice. And I feel like at this point, I would not be surprised in the slightest if he was the starter for week one. And now for the daily report on Jalen Hurts, Shocker, he was fantastic once again, as he made several nice plays, including the touchdown pass to Wilson, and also a couple other TDs, including one to Devontae Smith across the middle of the field from about 10 yards out. And he ended up finishing 11 for 13 with three touchdowns and no interceptions once again. So again, it's awesome to hear that Jalen is doing great at camp. And it's also cool to see Jalen exiting practice on a golf cart with Nick Sirianni while blasting some music. And they were both all smiles. So yeah, it really does seem like they hate each other so much, doesn't it? Now, just to wrap up here and in some more injury news, one unfortunate thing that did happen at today's practice was that center Cam Jurgens ended up leaving a little bit early as he exited the field with a trainer. Now, there's not much out right now as I'm recording this as to what the injury is or what exactly happened. So hopefully it's not serious, but this is going to be something to monitor as the days move forward and as Cam progresses. And I'll make sure to update you guys whenever we get new information on this. Now, the Eagles are going to be back at practice tomorrow and Wednesday before having their first preseason game versus the Baltimore Ravens on Friday. And I'm going to be covering all of that. So if you don't want to miss any of that, make sure you subscribe. And also, again, really, really importantly, turn on notifications. And also while you're at it, make sure you drop a like to show some support. If you did enjoy this video, I'd greatly appreciate it. And it really does help me out a ton. Again, let's see if we can get to 800 likes on this video and also just leave a comment down below regarding anything that I talked about in this video and if you want to watch another Eagles video recapping practice yesterday you can check this out right here and now with all that being said that's pretty much all I got for this one guys so thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video